It is a pleasure to see you again for the second part of our video series on moving averages. In this segment, we will consider weighted moving averages. We'll explore what weighted moving averages are, how they play a pivotal role in forecasting, and what sets them apart from simple moving averages. Just as we did in the previous video, we'll walk through a practical example to illustrate how weighted moving averages function and how they're used for forecasting. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So, what are weighted moving averages and what makes this forecasting method different from simple moving averages? Weighted moving averages are a forecasting technique that assigns different weights to various data points within a time series. Unlike simple moving averages, where all data points are treated equally, weighted moving averages give more significance to certain data points by assigning them higher weights. These weights are often based on the belief that recent data is more relevant in predicting future values. The weighted approach allows for a more responsive and adaptable forecasting model, making it particularly useful when forecasting future trends based on recent data. By using this method, you can capture and react to changes in data patterns more effectively. Having said this, how then do we assign different weights to each data points? When assigning weights to data points for a weighted moving average, the idea is to give each data point a different level of importance in the calculation. The sum of these weights does not need to equal the length of the time period, but it must be non-zero. For example, if you are calculating a three-day weighted moving average, the sum of the weights can be any value, as long as it is non-zero. One common way to assign weights is to give more weight to the most recent data. For example, you could use the weights 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2, with the highest weight given to the most recent day. This is because the most recent data is likely to be the most representative of the current trend. You can also use other weighting schemes, depending on specific forecasting needs. For example, if you believe that the data is more volatile at the beginning of the time period, you could give more weight to the later data points. The key is to choose weights that reflect your expert judgment about which data points are more informative in predicting future values. Considering what we have discussed so far, the formula for calculating a weighted moving average for a specific day within a time series is shown here. In this formula, WMA is the weighted moving average for the specific data points you're calculating. X values represent the data values for each data point within the time period you're considering. X1 corresponds to the most recent data point, X2 to the second most recent, and so on. As for W values, these represent the weights assigned to each data point. The weights should be determined based on your judgment of the importance of each data point. Weight 1 corresponds to the most recent day, weight 2 to the second most recent, and so on. To understand this better, let us consider an example. A company that produces smartphones is experiencing a seasonal increase in demand for its products. The company's operations manager needs to forecast demand for the next three months in order to ensure that the company has enough inventory to meet demand without overstocking. He has been able to collect time series data in months as shown in the table here. The operations manager decides to use a two-point weighted moving average to forecast demand by assigning a heavier weight to the most recent data. Considering this, the operations manager then assigns a 0.7 to a recent demand and 0.3 to the previous month's demand. To now calculate a two-months weighted moving average using the available time series data on total demand for each month, we start our calculations from the second month which is February as there is no available data for the previous month to January. To assign the lower weighting of 0.3 to the previous month, we multiply this by January's total demand of 1,000. We then assign a heavier weighting of 0.7 to February by multiplying it to the total demand of 1,100. Adding these together, we get the weighted moving average value of 1,070 for the months of January and February. For the next period, March, we will consider the total demand for February and March to calculate the weighted moving average. We then assign 0.7 weighting to March being the more recent period, 
and 0.3 to February, which is now the older period. To now calculate, we multiply 0.3 by February's demand of 1,100 plus 0.7 multiplied by March's demand 1,200. This should give us a value of 1,170. Let's do one more month before we ask you to help us complete this two months weighted moving average column. So, for April, we multiply 0.3 by March's demand of 1,200 plus 0.7 multiplied by April's total demand of 1,300. This will give us a value of 1,270. It is now time for you to pause the video to do a bit of practicing by please helping us to complete the two months weighted moving average column. If you have completed the column correctly, these should be the values of the two-month weighted moving average calculated. Pause the video if you need to verify your answers. So, based on our calculations, what can we forecast? We know that the objective of the operations manager is to forecast the next three months' demand based on the two months' weighted moving averages. This will allow the operations manager to make an informed decision on inventory levels. Further to this, we can use the two months weighted moving average to forecast demand for the next three months. Even though we don't have the actual demand for January yet, we can still forecast it by using the two month weighted moving average for the month of December. The two month weighted moving average is used to assume that the current trend will continue. In this case, the current trend is that demand is increasing. In a worst case scenario, we can assume that demand will remain the same in subsequent month January, which is 2070. Now that we have the value of December's demand and the estimated demand of January, we can calculate the two months weighted moving average for January. We achieve this by applying a weighting of 0.3 to December multiplying it by its demand of 2,100, and then adding the result to the product of the assigned weighting of 0.7 and January's estimated demand of 2,070. This should give us a two months weighted moving average of 2,079. For the month of February, we again assume the two months weighted moving average for January, which is 2079, will be the estimated demand for February. This will give us the demand for January and February to be 2070 and 2079 respectively. To calculate the two month weighted moving average for February, we then multiply 0.3 by the demand of 2070, then add the outcome to the multiplication of the assigned weighting of 0.7 by the estimated demand for February of 2079. This should give us 2076.3. Would you like to pause the video and have a go at forecasting the demand for March and then calculate the two months weighted moving average? Please pause the video now. If you have calculated correctly, your working should be similar to what is shown and the answers you get must be what is written in the column. Now that we have forecasted the demand for the next three months, what other informed decision can the operations manager make using the two months weighted moving average? The operations manager can use this data for different scenarios as well. For example, by forecasting demand with the weighted moving average, the operations manager can maintain an optimal level of inventory. If the weighted moving average suggests an increase in demand over the next three months, they can order and stock sufficient materials or finished products. The operations manager can also allocate resources, such as labor and equipment, based on the forecasted demand. As demand is expected to rise, they can adjust staffing levels and production shifts accordingly. The synopsis of the matter is that having a forecast based on the weighted moving average allows the operations manager to be prepared for changes in demand, reducing the risk of last-minute adjustments and potential disruptions in the operations and supply chain. It is now your turn, friends. We want you to have a go at using weighted moving average to forecast when planning and controlling operations and supply chain. In this scenario, you are an operations manager for an e-commerce company specializing in electronics. 
you need to forecast the daily demand for a specific product over the next two weeks to manage inventory and ensure timely deliveries. You have historical data for the past 14 days of daily product sales as shown here. Using a three-day weighted moving average, calculate the daily sales forecast for each of the next 14 days. The assigned weights for this analysis are 0.4 for the most recent day, 0.3 for the day before, and 0.3 for the day before that. How then would these forecasts impact your inventory and logistics planning for the upcoming two weeks? That concludes our series on moving averages. We trust that you've found our explanation videos on these invaluable forecasting tools both informative and enjoyable. For more insightful content, please stay tuned by liking, subscribing, and enabling the notification bell. Your continued support means the world to us, and we look forward to having you with us in our upcoming videos. Thank you for joining us once again, and we can't wait to see you in the next one.